Well, I have more news up here at Adesawe in Kanda. This is News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Coming up this evening. 60 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint and Piccadilly Biscuits. My Life Insurance. Danger looms at Aferiwa in the uh, Ashaiman municipality following blockade of two streams by private developer. Sporters take over Sunyai Municipal Children's Park and Library. In business, independent power producer car power ship Ghana relocates 470 megawatts power ship from Tema to Western Region. And on the international front tonight, conservative candidate and ex-prison chief Alejandro Gamate, elected president of Guatemala. We have details of these and other stories coming up in the next 60 minutes. Remember, we're also live on DSTV channel 279. So on to our first story this evening, where danger looms at Aferewa in the Ashaman municipality as a private developer has blocked two streams which collect water from several communities into the Chemo Lagoon. A director of the National Disaster Management Organization of the Ashaman area as municipal assembly, Daniel Aqua, confirmed the situation if not handled now, can lead to a major disaster. Joseph Armstrong has more. For residents of the Ashema municipality, severe flooding after rains resulting in death and displacement is common. The situation is likely to get worse following the activities of a private developer who is trying to reclaim land by filling two streams. Residents who would not speak on camera for fear of being victimized says houses along the streams are submerged anytime it rains and fear the worst. So we know the kind of person. That's why it's like everybody is trying to because there are strong guys behind him. You know that I'm 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 I'm, I'm afraid to speak. I can't speak. Are well, you afraid? Can't. Yes, but talk. but the kind of people who are behind him. Regardless of the pressure that comes with the running water from adjoining communities such as Michelle Camp, Sebrepo, Bethlehem. Gulf City and Christian Village, this is an alternative provided by the private developer. I don't know who, whether it is a, an individual or a group of people who are trying to reclaim the land by filling uh, a storm drain. And the moment you fill a storm drain, it may have uh, adverse effects on other people. It may find its way and actually affect innocent people. He expects engineers of the assembly to act quickly. Looking at the storm drain and where the water normally flows from, I don't think. There's no way that particular channel can absorb the water. And that is where it will also find its way and affect other innocent people. Something has to be done about it. So I'll get authorities or other departments informed. The Sherman Municipal Assembly is yet to respond to the issue. Joseph Armstrong, TV3 News. Residents of the Promised Land, the suburb of Ashai Manor, are up in arms against the Presbyterian Church in the area and a hotel owner for closing the only alternative access route to the community. Here's another report by Joseph Armstrong. This is the only access route for residents of Promised Land in Ashai Manor municipality. The residents have accused the two entities of depriving them of their basic right to access their properties and homes. <laughs> The residents said they have been negotiating with the church to release about 20 feet at the edge of their property to be used as an alternative access route. They claimed the church neglected their concerns and rather erected a gate in the said area. There is no other road except this one. People are coming from other communities. Everybody uses this one with cattle, sheep and whatever. We are pleading with the assemblyman, MC, DC, whichever authority should come to our aid and help us open the other gate so that there will be easy access to the community. Pregnant women are supposed to be going round and round and round before going to the hospital. Where children are sick, there is no alternative way to take them to the hospital. In times of emergency, there is no access road for either police, um, fire service or even ambulance to come into our community. We've been putting in a cage. We don't have true access route. In case of any fire outbreak, the fire tender has only one access, has to go around either Berman Quine or has to go through 
Tema International outside Afarwa before we can get to our community. Daniel Aqua is the director of the National Disaster Management Organization in Ashaima. No access. So in case of accidents, in case of uh, fire outbreak, uh, when there's a situation that people need to rush somebody to the hospital, no, no, very, no way. Or there's, there's not going to be any. Uh, the root network is going to, is very bad and it's going to affect the people. He promised he would channel the grievances of the residents to the municipal chief executive for redress. It becomes very critical. I have to write to region through national for them to come and assess the situation and don't make sure they will force the people to break that particular structure. The MC and the engineer at the municipal assembly says they are doing everything possible to provide the residents with access roads. Joseph Armstrong, TV3 News. Well, the Children's Park and Library in the Shunyai Municipality has been abandoned. Now, the park itself is deserted as there is nothing in place to attract patronage. Our correspondent Larry Park with Moses has come through with the following report. Children's Park, the world over, are designated areas where facilities are put in place to engender the healthy growth and well-being of children. This is however not the case at the Sunyai Municipal Children's Park. A recent media report prompted the clearing of their overgrown weeds. Overly exposed at the park are neglected falling trees, broken fence wires and unfriendly playing ground. Squatters also find the park a safe haven to wash and dry their clothes. A substantial portion of the park is enveloped in thick bushes and trees. Within the frightening thick growth is a children's park library. The once imposing facility has been neglected and left to rot. Everything in the library is totally shattered beyond repairs. It's unfortunate that we have this children's park in the state in which it is now. It doesn't speak well of the nation in terms of the, the law that we've made and then the commitment that internationally we've also made and what we owe children. So I think that we need to take steps to develop this place and the state must also be interested. And as society, we need to also ensure that we take uh, government on to develop this place for uh, the children. I don't think that what we are seeing today is nothing to write home about. The neglect of the children's park and library does not only constitute a drain on public funds, but a deprivation of children's right to enjoy their leisure and recreation in the Sunyani municipality. I will appeal to the Minister of Local Government to consider this as a priority. It's important that um, we look at it as a national agenda uh, uh, to see how best we can develop sites that would also promote the welfare of children. It's, it's, it's very key. These are little things that we take for granted, but it speaks a lot of volume. It also communicates to children that the state is being responsible towards their welfare. Now, a 50-acre cocoa farm owned by the 2013 National Best Farmer, Abraham Eduse, is alleged to have been giving out to a small-scale mining company called Ashenia C Limited at Chebi in the Eastern Region. The cocoa farm, according to the president of the Concerned Farmers Association of Ghana, in 2014 was awarded the Global Best Cocoa Farm. On the phone line now is president of the Concerned Farmers Association of Ghana, Nana Abodiai Mensa Bonsu. Uh, good evening and welcome to News 360. Good evening, madam. Um, can you tell us what exactly, uh, um, can you tell us about the destruction of the 50-acre cocoa farm? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, the name is Nana Obwadi, of farm Bob Watson, to the second. Okay, thank you very much for that correction, sir. Yeah. Uh, the 50-acre cocoa farm is a global award uh, winning farm, which uh, the man called Ibrahim Adusei had it during 2014. And this farm will be destroyed very soon for this uh, small-scale mining, which uh, the, pre the presidency of Ghana, Republic of Ghana, has given a concession for this organization for them to come and then destroy this cocoa plant and then uh, mine this uh, galaxy or maybe the small-scale mining. But what we are saying is uh, it doesn't make sense to us. And then one also is said, why is it that we are destroying cocoa in this country, mining at the same time, uh, planting rubber and a whole lot of things. The government, the president of Ghana, assure we that he wants one million tons of cocoa. So if we are destroying all the cocoa trees in this country, how can the government get a one million tons? 
That is what we are calling for. That government shouldn't touch this cocoa tree, uh, the, the cocoa plantation that is there because it is an award, global award winning in the whole world, which it can be also set as a tourist sector. And this cocoa uh, uh, farm, uh, when you get into it and you see the number of fruits that it has bear, which they are going to destroy, it will cause harm to the country and at the same time will turn the image of Ghana internationally. That is why we, the consent farmers, are telling government not to touch this cocoa plantation. Now, can you also confirm who is giving out the cocoa farm as a mining concession to small-scale mining companies? Come again. Uh, can you confirm who is giving out the cocoa farm to the small-scale uh, mining company? It's the President's Republic of Ghana. They have given a concession to this uh, small-scale mining to take place at uh, Enum uh, Chibi Apapam. And what agreement has gone on between the owner of the farm and government leading to the leasing of the land? Do you know? The, 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 there was not an agreement that has, uh, has taken place. All that we heard was that the concession has been given and they are going to destroy the cocoa farm and then the mining will take place. And the most annoying thing and the most uh, thing that it hurt me so much is the same place, the Chebi Road that has been constructed recently, which government put a ban on the cocoa road, which that, that side wasn't even put a ban and then he constructed the road, was the cocoa road. You see, and all the cocos that are, uh, that are in that portion so are going to be destroyed. And let us ask them, what have you got from this small-scale mining? What are their contributions towards uh, our economy or towards the road network that is being built in this country? It is the cocoa money. So why is it that government will not hold on with this kind of uh, activity that is going on and then for we to have our cocoa? Because all that we know is cocoa is Ghana and Ghana is cocoa. The backbone of our economy is cocoa, but not this small-scale mining. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Nana Obwadie Boating is the president of the Cocoa Farmers Association of Ghana. Well, the Registrar of the Scholarship Secretariat, Kinsley Ajiman, has denied claims by former President John Dramani Mahama that more female Ghanaian students were sent to Cuba in 2012 to train as doctors. Discounting the claims in an interview with TV3, he also described the deal as a bad one which overburdened the national purse. In 2012, the former president, John Dramani Mahama, negotiated a deal with the Cuban authorities to send young Ghanaians to be trained as doctors. The arrangement cost $150,000 per trainee for seven years, which was not under a scholarship by the Cuban government. 250 Ghanaians made up of 85 females and 165 males were sent to Cuba, out of which 220 have completed the course. Nine failed the Cuban state exams, while seven who engaged in infractions of the Cuban law were repatriated. 13 students were repeated, one bolted, with another also sent home on medical grounds. All the 220 doctors who are here are all general practitioners. None of them is a specialist. So a session that uh, he took gynecologists there or people are coming to train in the ops and gyne is obviously a falsehood. Again also asserted that uh, more women were taken. That is also a palpable lie. The Registrar of the Scholarship Secretariat, Kaisley Ajeman, spoke about the 2019 agreement of the new batch of the students. When ex-president Mahama negotiated for the deal, it cost every student for the entire duration of the program. Tuition and accommodation was $96,090. In 2019, when we went to renegotiate, we had it at $55,000. US dollars per student for the duration of the program. Obviously, seven years down the line, average, average minds or reasonable people will believe that it should have gone up instead of it coming down. So I believe that the negotiation was a bad negotiation in 2012. The 220 trainee doctors will write their exams before being posted. The Deputy Minister of Health, Alex KK Aban, urged the students to follow standards and comply with directives. Some of the doctors shared the experience. What stands out in the Cuban training? I mean, you get to go to the field from first year of medical school, we're already seeing patients not taking, I mean, um, bold uh, steps in it, no, but at least having interaction with patients and it's very practical. 
Now, the Ghana Journalist Association is advocating a legislation to compel radio and television stations to acquire delayed broadcast equipment to avert the re uh, relay of intemperate language on air. President of the association, Roland Afomoni, gave the hint at the launch of a campaign against hate speech in Accra. Insults, they say, begets insults. So the trading of insults on our airwaves must stop. We strongly recommend the acquisition by or supply of delayed broadcast equipment to all radio and TV stations in Ghana. The GJ is ready to back any legislative efforts in this respect. Peace, it is said, is the ultimate of life. And so under no circumstances should the peace of this country be sacrificed on the altar of political campaign or devilish agenda. Speaking at the launch of the Watch Your Tongue campaign, the president of the Ghana Journalists Association, Roland Afiomoni, recounted some reckless statements made during 2008 and 2012 election hearing. Certain rogue elements mounted certain pugnacious radio stations to openly incite violence or ignite war. It took the grace of God to save this nation from self destruction. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. The GJA president recalled the Rwandan genocide and insisted there must be conscious efforts to protect Ghana. The bad examples of evil use of the tongue in Rwanda should serve as a fountain of lessons from which all Ghanaians, particularly politicians and journalists, must drink. A cardinal lesson is that Ghana is not immune from instability caused by unguarded use of the tongue. Thus, points must be drummed home more and more as we head towards election 2020. He appealed to the police administration and government to honor Sergeant Daniel Kwesiofori Apia for his initiative. Police officers are essentially peace officers. Without any shred of doubt, Kwesiofori Apia has taken the peace drive to a higher notch. And my humble recommendation is for Kwesiofori Apia to be promoted for being a veritable ambassador of peace. The Guard Your Town campaign seeks to promote the core values of think right, speak right, write right, and act right. Of course, journalists, especially electronic media practitioners, must own this campaign and saturate the airwaves with it. Their best push for this campaign will be to cleanse our newspapers, radio, and TV stations of linguistically toxic material with some channels every day without any sense of shame or prick of conscience. Well, she has devoted her whole life supporting the vulnerable. In a sharp twist of events, she now requires the financial assistance to undergo surgery. In the following report, George Quaining tells a story of 28-year-old social entrepreneur Priscilla Na Akle Okanse, who needs 20,000 CDs to top up 80,000 CDs raised to correct a defect on her left hand following an accident. In 2013, Priscilla Na Akle Okanse was involved in a car accident on the Clever Mountains whilst on work errands with a company driver. The car veered into the valley with the impact of tree stamps causing damage to her left hand and leg. After several surgeries, she managed to correct her left leg, but what keeps deteriorating is her left hand. The implant in her hand has failed on numerous occasions with disconnected tissues. She's unable to use her left hand, so she's assisted to bath and wear her clothes. The worst case is that her hand will be amputated. I literally cannot use my arm for anything worthwhile. I'm a social entrepreneur. My work involves going out, going to villages, moving in and out, and my work has been stalled since February. Worst case scenario, the bones rot away. 
and the hand is probably cut off. But that's not going to happen. That can happen. Through GoFundMe, friends and relatives, she has managed to raise 80,000 CDs and needs some 20,000 CDs to ensure her scheduled surgery in September in South Africa is made possible. I've had three surgeries on the hand, two at St. Joseph's and one at Kolobu. I've had three surgeries, but the same thing keeps happening again. There's no union, the implants don't work. And I mean, the last surgery I was hoping would be the last. So this happened. She's almost through with a master's program in project management at the University of Ghana Business School. Before her defect, Prisla was supporting the needy and vulnerable through her Reach Out World mission, in which many have been beneficiaries. Your donation can be sent through mobile money on the number 54 90 or car bank account 2260139726112 Ring Road Branch. You can also send your support here at TV3 for Priscilla. On MTN Video Report this evening, our citizen journalist Emmanuel Odonko reports on faulty traffic lights at Lati Junction in the Greater Accra region. So this is Manuel Donko and I'm reporting from T Junction in La, right in front of the La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. The traffic light is working. About a week ago, I reported that it wasn't working and I don't know if it was fixed later on or not. It started working then, I think some few days afterwards, it stopped working. So the problem or the fault is um, intermittent. It works for some time and then it stops. Then it starts working again. So I um, implore those who are responsible to take um, immediate action. The route is a busy one. You can also send your video reports via WhatsApp 0551 433 That's 0551 433 this is live here on News 360. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, on 3news.com, on DSTV Channel 279. We'll be back shortly with some more stories. Do stay. Welcome back. It's now time for business. An independent power producer, Car Power Ghana, says its 470 megawatt power ship will be off the national grid from tomorrow, August 13, as it re relocates to the Western region. Car Power Ship and the Electricity Company of Ghana in June 2014 signed a power purchase agreement for the provision of 450 megawatts of electricity power through the supply of two 225 megawatt power ships by building the infrastructure for the country's medium to long-term electricity supply needs. The first 225 megawatt power ship was supplied. However, through a renegotiation by government, a 470 megawatt power badge was brought in to replace the 225 megawatt plant. Corporate Communications Specialist at Car Power, Sandra Amakwe, outlined the roadmap for the relocation of the power badge. The arrangement is that the power ship will depart from the Tema Fishing Harbor on Thursday, August 15, and it will birth within the second day naval base on Friday, August 16th. We envisage that due to pre commissioning works, to connect the power ship to the transmission lines in second D, the power ship should be off the national grid for a maximum period of 17 days. The power ship is expected to be connected to the 330 kV transmission lines in second D. The relocation is in line with government strategic policy for the power ship to utilize natural gas from the Western Enclave. Now, head of risk at the Bank of Ghana, Evelyn Quetia, has urged corporate Ghana to place emphasis on risk management to inform decision-making based on data. At the opening of the Africa Conversion in Quantitative Methods and Risk Management in Accra, she noted one of the major issues that led to the collapse of some financial institutions in the country was lack of risk management. 
Risk management in business is the forecasting and evaluation of financial risk together with the identification of procedures to avoid or minimize their impact. This concept is transferable and cuts across all sectors of the economy. At the opening of the Africa Risk Convention in Quantitative Methods and Risk Management in Accra, Head of Risk at the Bank of Ghana, Evelyn Kotia, noted risk management is the way forward in saving corporate Ghana. Some of the issues that affected the financial sector that we saw some banks being um, collapsed or being taken over was as a result of weak um, risk management in the respective banks. So every part of uh, the Ghanaian economy has to take risk management very, very serious because the moment you are able to identify your risks, you are able to mitigate your risks, you will uh, derive better benefit. The risk management convention and training is to offer politicians, policy makers, industry players among others to appreciate risk associated with their work. This could be used for you know organizations around the world uh, doing things like value at risk, probability of default and so forth all the way to multinational organizations. And 20 to 25 percent of the course has to do with theory but at the same time 75 percent of the time is hands-on application. Managing Director of OSL Risk Management Dr. Elvis Hernandez Pedumo urged the trainees to be the game changers after their course. After this event, it's important that these guys come back to the organizations and start applying these type of things into the day-to-day -day activities. And at the same time, helping decision maker to make informed decisions. The Pro-Vice Chancellor of UPSA, Professor Charles Bano, and Dr. Rexford Atabuache, of the Coventry University, UK, put the Africa Risk Convention into the Ghanaian perspective. In the various sectors in the economy to improve on their decision making. Um, currently, you agree with me that um, some decisions have been made in this country. Uh, perhaps we may not have considered the right quantitative data for making those decisions. There were a lot of guys competitively wanted to take it to other countries. I was able to put economic and business case for this project to come to Ghana. Then it came to which institutions that we, we can partner with in Ghana. So we managed to talk to uh, investor of professional studies. This has uh, decision-making analytics that makes risk, re, uh, decision uh, making quite interesting because it, it quantifies, um, uh, it gives you a different perspective of how to manage risk. And that's all for business this evening. Log on to our website, 3news.com, for more business news. Stay with us here. We'll be right back after this. Oh, well, so another season of Ghana's Most Beautiful is upon us tonight. And some past GMB queens and participants have been sharing their expectations ahead of the start of the 2019 GMB shows. So Ryan Chelsea, Ifa Frempa, interacted with some of them. The 2019 GMB was launched at Kumase, the citadel of culture, amidst rich display culture. 16 poised ladies will be seeking to make their region proud as a show kickstart on Sunday, August 18. The historic launch was graced by dignitaries, royalty, as well as some past GMB queens. They encourage their wannabe queens to strive harder and put their best foot forward if their dream of winning the competition is to be achieved. You should focus on where you are going and not who is at your back. They should just focus on what they are doing. They should give out their best and never forget that the only key to success is God Almighty. They should stay focused and they should make sure they concentrate on their task. The weekly tax is very important. I do know that those constitute about 70% of the outcome of the competition, but I also encourage them to bring their best because the whole world is watching. They shouldn't give up, stay focused and keep their eyes on the crown, the cash, the car and the crown. <laughs> I'd like to advise my fellow contestants from my region to be hardworking, to be determined and then they'll see themselves there. They also share the experiences whilst in the GMB reality house. <laughs> 
my experience, I must say, was very, very challenging, yet fun, and most importantly, was very, very educative. I learned a whole lot from nine other ladies, and it was so challenging because all these other contestants were beautiful and intelligent. I learned from them, and I used those to help myself, and by God's grace, I emerged winner. It's not easy to be in the house, but it's worth it. Surviving in the house, it takes hard work, determination, and then you knowing what you're going for. GMB 2019, Black and Proud. <laughs> oh boy. But I think you should have contested for Ghana's most beautiful. I should have. Yes, you should have. <laughs> honestly. You could, I mean, I would have spent my whole salary for the next 12 months <laughs> voting for you. About if, 16 ladies. Yeah. This season is going to be fun. Absolutely. Yes, and so everybody should keep their eyes here on TV3. It's Absolutely. going to be exciting. And that's all for the news this evening. There's more news on tnews.com. I am Aisha Yakubu. And my name is Alfred Okansi. Stay with us.